Good day, viewers. My name is Agali Belinda Chizava. I'm taking on the subject chemistry and the topic mechanism of electrolysis of some certain substances. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe the electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride. This is the products of electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride at the cathode and at the anode. This is the products of electrolysis of fused sodium chloride. This is the products of the electrolysis of acidified water. This is the products of electrolysis of copper sulfate using carbon anode and copper anode. And the products of electrolysis of potassium bromide. Before the passage of electricity, remember electrolysis simply means passing electric current through a solution of electrolytes for it to be decomposed. So before the passage of electricity, ions are wandering randomly through the electrodes and the electrolytes. As current is passed through the negative terminal, which is the anode to the cathode of the electrolytic cell, the negatively charged cathode then attracts the cations in the electrolyte to itself. The cations accept electrons to become electrically neutral and are eventually discharged. The positive terminal, which is the cathode of the battery, draws electrons from the anode of the electrolytic cell. Anions and the electrolyte are then attracted to the positively charged anode, where they give up their electrons to become electrically neutral and are also discharged finally. Hence, an electric current passes through the complete circuit. This is what an electrolytic cell looks like. This is the cathode. Once the electrons pass through here to the anode to the electrolyte, this becomes negatively charged and attracts the positively charged ions to the cathode, while this, the negatively charged anions goes to the anode. Electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride. In electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride, the products are oxygen gas at the anode, while hydrogen gas is, at, is at, liberated at the cathode. Using inert electrodes, the reaction occurs as follows. Ionization of sodium chloride uses the following ions, sodium ion and chloride ion from sodium chloride, and then hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion from water. At the cathode, the hydrogen ion is discharged, being lower than sodium in the electrochemical series. It will accept the electrons to liberate hydrogen gas. While at the anode, the hydroxide ions are discharged, being higher in the electrochemical series to give us water and then oxygen gas. The overall redox equation becomes hydrogen ion liberating hydrogen gas, while hydroxyl ion liberating water and oxygen gas. Since hydrogen and hydroxyl ion are removed from the electrolyte solution, the concentration of the salt solution increases. At the end of the reaction, hydrogen and oxygen gas are produced at the electrodes while the electrolyte becomes a concentrated sodium chloride solution. Electrolysis of concentrated sodium chloride or brine. The electrolysis of brine use hydrogen and chlorine at the electrodes and a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide. Brine contains four different types of ions, sodium ion and chloride ion from sodium chloride and then a hydrogen ion and hydrogen ion from water. When concentrated sodium chloride is electrolyzed using inert electrodes, that's graphite, at the cathode, the sodium and hydrogen ion move towards the cathode, where hydrogen ions are discharged in preference for the sodium ion, producing hydrogen gas. While at the anode, the chloride and hydroxyl ion move towards the anode, but because chloride ions are of higher concentration, they are preferentially discharged, producing chlorine gas. Overall redox reaction. Hydrogen ion reacting with chloride ion to give you hydrogen gas and chlorine gas. This type of electrolysis is important in the production of hydrogen, chlorine, and sodium hydroxide. The electrolytic cell for industrial electrolysis of brine is known as the Kellner Solvay cell. Electrolysis of fused sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is a typical ionic compound. In the solid state, the sodium and chloride ions are in the crystals are not mobile. But in molten state, the electrolyte produces the mobile ions, sodium ion as the only positive ion, and chloride ion as the only negative ion. When current is passed through the electrolyte, the reaction takes place as follows. At the cathode, only sodium ions are at the cathode. 
They accept electrons from the electron-rich cathode and are discharged as neutral atoms. Sodium metal is therefore deposited at the cathode. Then at the anode, only chloride ions are at the anode, where they lose their negative charges to the electron poor anode and are discharged as neutral atoms. The viral redox reactions can be written as sodium from plus chlorine, chloride ion, sorry, to give you sodium, solid sodium and then chlorine gas. The commercial cell used for the industrial production of sodium metal is known as a down cell. Electrolysis of acidified water. In the electrolysis of acidified water, inert platinum electrodes are used, while the electrolyte is distilled water, to which a few drops of tetraozosulfate 6 acid has been added to provide enough conductivity. This is because water is a poor conductor of uh, electricity. The third electrolytic cell used for carrying out the electrolysis is called the Hoffman's voltameter. The electrolyte contains the following ions. From H2SO4 we have hydrogen ion and sulfate ion and from water we have hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. At the anode, hydroxyl ion is discharged being higher in the electrochemical series to give us hydrogen gas and then a water. While at the cathode, hydrogen ion is discharged being the only cation present to give us hydrogen gas and water. The amount of the acid in the electrolyte remains the same, but there is an increase in the concentration of the electrolyte because water is being used up during the process of the electrolysis. Here we can see two volumes of water giving us hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Note that the volume of hydrogen gas liberated at the cathode is twice that of the oxygen gas evolved at the anode. Hydrolysis of copper 2 sulfate. Electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate solution is done using different anodes. The electrolytic cell used is designed to collect solid copper deposits at the anode. The electrolyte used is copper 2 sulfate solution. The electrolyte contains the following ions. From water, we have hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. And from copper sulfate, we have copper 2 ion and sulfate ion. At the cathode, copper 2 ion and hydrogen ion migrate to the cathode where copper ion is discharged preferentially. The copper ion acquires two electrons each from the cathode to, become, to be deposited as metallic copper on the cathode. As a result, the cathode gradually grows thicker. Here you can see the copper ion plus two electrons to give you copper solid. The reaction is the same whether a platinum carbon or copper cathode is used. At the anode, if you are using a carbon anode or platinum anode, both sulfate ion and hydroxyl ion migrate to the anode, where hydroxyl ions are preferentially discharged as oxygen gas. First of all, the hydroxyl ion will discharge as a, a radical plus electron. Why two hydroxyl radicals will combine to form water and oxygen atom. And then two oxygen atoms will combine finally to form oxygen gas. The viral reaction may be written as copper plus uh, hydroxyl ion to give you two copper solid plus oxygen gas plus water. From the viral reaction, it can be said that the electrolysis of copper sulfate yields copper deposits at the cathode and oxygen at the anode. As the copper 2 ion and hydroxyl ion are gradually discharged, the solution becomes acidic. Remember that this and this are leaving. What is left in the solution is hydrogen ion and sulfate ion. With tetraozo sulfate 6 acid, due to the hydrogen ion and sulfate 6 ion, which remain in the solution. This change is seen by the gradual fading away of the blue color of copper sulfate solution. If a copper anode is used, Electrons can be supplied through the anode in three ways. The sulfate ion in the solution could be deposited as a sulfate salt, or the hydroxyl ion in the solution could be discharged as gaseous oxygen and water. The metallic atoms on the anode and the anode surface might dissolve in the solution as ions, leaving electrons behind. The conversion of copper atoms to copper ions is favored, as it requires the least energy. So no other ions are discharged. 
Instead, for each atom of copper deposited at the cathode, one atom of copper is dissolved from the anode to form copper 2 ion. There is no change in the composition of the electrolyte since copper is merely transferred from the anode to the cathode during electrolysis. You can see from the anode to the electrolyte and from the electrolyte to the cathode. Another way you can see this is that the electrolyte will remain blue in color. There will be no change in the color of the electrolyte. Electrolysis of fused potassium bromide. Potassium bromide is a typical ionic compound. In solid states, the potassium and bromide ions in the crystals are not mobile. But in the molten state, the electrolyte produces potassium ions as the only positive ion and bromide ion as the only negative ion. At the cathode, only potassium ions are, are the cathode. There, they accept electrons from the electron-rich cathode and are discharged as neutral atoms. Then at the anode, only bromide ions are at the anode where they lose their negative charges to the electron poor anode and are discharged as neutral atoms. The overall redox reaction may be written as two potassium ions plus two bromide ions to give you two potassium plus bromine liquid. The electrolysis of fused potassium bromide yields potassium metal at the cathode and then a bromine gas at the anode. Let us evaluate ourselves to know if we have actually learned anything during this lesson. Question 1 says, why does oxidation take place at the anode during electrolysis? This is because the cathode is electron-rich, electron sorry, while the anode is uh, electron-poor. Uh, and then the anode will lose electrons. List the observable changes that take place when dilute solution of copper 2 sulfate is electrolyzed using carbon electrodes. When you are electrolyzing copper 2 sulfate using carbon electrodes, carbon electrodes are inert electrodes. Therefore, there won't be any change. It's simply copper 2 ions will be liberated at the cathode while oxygen gas will be liberated at the anode. And number three, a concentrated solution of sodium chloride was electrolyzed using graphite electrodes. State the ions present in the solution. The ions present in the solution are sodium ion, chloride ion, hydrogen ion, and hydroxyl ion. Then the products are the cathode. First at the cathode is the sodium ion, and then at the anode is chloride ion. Then the byproduct of the electrolysis. The byproduct of the electrolysis is uh, sodium hydroxide. And number four, name the acid used in the electrolysis of water. The acid used is tetraoxosulfate, six acid. Number five, what is the name of the cell used in the industrial production of sodium metal? The name of the cell is down cell. And lastly, number six, what happens at the cathode when a solution of copper two sulfate is electrolyzed using copper as a cathode. Copper ions are deposited at the cathode when you use when you electrolyze copper two sulfate using copper as a cathode. We have come to the end of our lesson. Thank you for listening.